to set up shortcuts in Katia, you need to go to Tools, Customize, Commands, scroll down to All Commands, and then inside the Commands window, you need to search for the function you want to assign a shortcut to. If I want to assign a shortcut to the pet function, I need to search the pet function. When you found the function, you need to select it, show its properties, and inside the accelerator field, you can then insert the desired short key. But there is a catch. You cannot bind anything to a single letter key. Katia requires a modifier such as Alt, Control, or Shift. For example, something like Alt S, Alt E, Alt F, etc. Single letter keys like Q, E, R or D won't work. There's also another catch. Shift cannot be used as a single modifier, so something like Shift E will not work. Shift always has to be combined with something like Alt or Control. So something like Shift Control E will work. In addition to that, you also need to be in the correct workbench to assign a shortcut. Currently, I am in part design, so I can assign a shortcut to the pet function. But for example, I cannot assign a shortcut to parallel curve. It's grayed out because I am not inside generative shape design. Okay, now that probably sounds a bit confusing. So let's take a look at how to implement a working shortcut system. The main philosophy is basically that you have to group related functions together. This means that you use Shift, Alt, Control as modifiers to create logical families of shortcuts, but also use the same shortcuts for functions that have similar purposes, which is just way easier to memorize and also makes it much smoother to work with. For example, in order to make a sketch, I need to press Alt S and then I am inside the sketch function. If I then accept it and I'm in the sketch environment, I can leave the sketch environment by pressing Shift Alt S. So everything that is related to sketch is binded to something around the S key. Another example is when I want to draw a radius inside a sketch, I have to press Alt D and I can then enter the radius function. Now outside a sketch, when I'm inside part design and I want to create a fillet, I also have to press Alt D. So in this case, I have kinda the same logic bound to the same key. A radius inside a sketch fits kinda the same purpose as a radius inside of part design. Another example is when I'm inside a sketch and I press Alt R, I can create a point. Now outside a sketch, Alt R allows me to enter the whole function. So I then can select the point and the surface and create a hole. These functions aren't related in terms of that they create the same stuff, but they are connected in terms of usage requirements since the whole function needs a point as an input. Let's take a closer look at how I implemented this. If I want to change into generative shape design, I need to press Alt 2 and I'm inside generative shape design. If I want to go back to part design, I press Alt 1. What I did is I have all the environment changes bound to something related to Alt 1, Alt 2, Alt 3 and so on. If I want to create a drawing, I simply have to press Alt 4. This allows me to switch workbenches way easier and way more convenient in day-to-day -day workflows. What I also suggest to you, or what I do is that I have the most important functions always binded to keys that are easy to reach. For example, Q, W, E, R, A, S, D, F, in combination with Alt. Inside of part design, when I want to create a pet, 
I press Alt Q. When I want to create a shaft, I press Alt W. When I want to create a fillet, I press Alt D. The same logic is also used inside the sketcher. When I want to draw a profile, I press Alt Q. When I want to create a rectangle, I press Alt W. Remember how I said that same functions have to be grouped together. So what I did with the rectangle, in order to draw a centered rectangle, I need to press Shift Alt W. And I draw a centered rectangle. So the W key is always related to something that is around drawing a rectangle. Another important thing that I want to share with you is I use Control E to insert a new body and in order to then use booleans I have all the boolean functions binded to Alt Shift Q, Alt Shift W and Alt Shift D. What I also use a lot is Alt E. On Alt E I have the properties function. If I want to access the properties of a function, I need to select it and press Alt E. And I'm directly inside the properties. I will not give you all my shortcuts because that is pointless. It is very important for you to figure out what are your most used functions that really need a keybind. But I really want to share with you my three most important shortcuts. For me, those are space, mouse button one, and mouse button two. Space I use for everything related to measuring and constraining. If I press space inside of part design, I access the measuring tool. Measuring is one of the most used tools in my day-to-day -day workflows as an engineer because you have to measure all the time and having that as a shortcut on space is just very convenient. Inside a sketch, if I want to draw a rectangle and I want to constrain it, I also have it bound to sp space. So space allows me to constrain the rectangle very easily. Now let's create a drawing of this. I click Alt 4. Then I create the front view with Shift Alt Q. And now when I want to dimension it, I also need to press space. In order to bind something to space, you need to go again to Tools, Customize, Commands, all commands and then you search for example the dimension feature and when you found it you go on show properties and then you have to type it as a name like this space. You can find how you have to write the keybinds that are special in the other tab. Here you see stuff like backspace, tab, enter, pause, escape. So if you want to use any of these keys you can take a look at this window here. Let's take a look at mouse button 1 and mouse button 2. Mouse button 1 I have bounded to enter and mouse button 2 I have bounded to F24. Inside Katia, F24 is binded to hide show and Alt F24 is binded to the swap visible space feature. Here you can see my mouse. Mouse button 1 to press enter and mouse button 2 for the hide show features. When I create a new sketch, I need to confirm the creation by clicking OK. In my case, I simply press mouse button 1 and I confirm the creation of the sketch. When I want to draw a pet or extrude the sketch, I also can simply confirm the creation by clicking mouse button 1 and I confirm the creation. Same applies to when I want to change properties of something. When I want to change the name of the part body, I can confirm the name change by clicking this button and I change the name. If I then want to hide the body, 
I need to select it and I can simply press mouse button 2 and I hit it. If I want to see the no-show space, I hold the Alt key and press mouse button 2 and I am in the no-show space. To go back again, I also need to hold the Alt key and press the button again. Being able to switch between the no-show space and the visible space for me is very convenient. I use it a lot of times, but you need to be a bit careful with it because in large assemblies, it can kinda lag your system. Using shortcuts obviously makes you faster by using any software, but in CATIA the bigger pillar is actually using proper design etiquette. This is extremely hard to learn and takes a lot of time. Um, sadly, what I do in speed modeling or what you see me do in most of my videos is actually the opposite of proper design etiquette in CATIA. I cut corners all the time. I have poor design trees that would break instantly when I change a feature. So what I really suggest you in addition to using the shortcut system or trying to use more shortcuts is actually trying to really learn and get into link management and proper design etiquette. But shortcuts also have another big benefit they reduce fatigue a lot. Um, what I mean by this is, if you have a function binded to a shortcut, you don't need to look at it or search it in the toolbar and then move your mouse in order to click it. So your mouse movement is actually reduced by a lot, which then is better for your wrist. So yeah, that's it for today. If you want me to do a proper design etiquette tutorial, just let me know. I hope you liked the video and if you have any question, please just let me know and I see you in the next one.